Cities around the world often have to grapple with difficult decisions. We think the story in this video will be relevant to you wherever you live. Like many cities, London is built on a river, the Thames. In the west of the city there are lots of bridge crossings, but in the east, the width of the river means there are less bridges and the few options to cross the Thames all have their disadvantages, be that vehicle restrictions, congestion or a toll charge. Let's look in particular at the Blackwall Tunnel. There are actually two tunnels. The northbound tunnel was opened in 1897. It has a height limit of 4 metres, which means that double-decker buses and most HGVs cannot use this route. The southbound tunnel was opened in 1967 and has a less restrictive height limit. Londoners know all too well that during rush hour this crossing gets extremely congested. Queues can extend a long way from the tunnel and delays of 20 minutes are not uncommon. This proves costly for businesses, frustrating for drivers, and means that public transport through the tunnel is unreliable and little used. The Silvertown Tunnel project was proposed as a way of reducing this congestion. Both northbound and southbound traffic would be catered for, and double-decker buses and larger HGVs would be able to travel in both directions. For businesses especially, this tunnel seems like a great idea. And if buses can be more reliable, then that might encourage more use of public transport. But that's only half the story. A significant problem is that the old and new crossings share the same approach roads, particularly the very busy A102 to the south, which already jams up at rush hour. New roads inevitably attract more vehicles. This is a phenomenon called induced traffic, where increased capacity on a route means that drivers who would otherwise avoid it are encouraged to change their journey plans. TfL admits that Silvertown Tunnel will be no exception. The Blackwall Tunnel approach roads are already saturated with traffic, so even if the new crossing relieves congestion near the tunnels, it will make traffic, congestion and pollution far worse across the surrounding areas. Public transport in these areas then gets less reliable, not more. The problem of induced traffic would also be compounded by the number of residential and commercial development projects proposed in the area. This includes a huge distribution centre, which will lead to even more HGV traffic than might be expected from merely giving access to the northbound route to taller vehicles. So, for residents in nearby Newham, Tower Hamlets and Greenwich, things get worse, not better. These areas already suffer high levels of pollution, which has been proven to be associated with a wide range of health issues. The increase in HGVs is a particular problem because of their diesel emissions and high levels of fine particulates from brakes and tyres. Schools are also located near the main access routes, and children are particularly vulnerable to the effects of poor air quality. These areas have high levels of socio-economic deprivation. In Newham, more than half of children are judged to be from households in poverty compared to 38% in London overall. COVID-19 has disproportionately affected these communities, so any additional pollution would have particularly disastrous effects on damaged lungs. It's clear that the Silvertown Tunnel Project could make life worse for a lot of people in surrounding areas. This will increase health and social care costs, worsen quality of life and increase inequality. The whole project narrative also defies basic common sense. Currently, the Blackwall Tunnel is free. TfL say they will recoup the £2.2 billion cost of the new tunnel by tolling both the Blackwall and Silvertown routes. This toll, however, has a second function. TfL say the charge will be raised as necessary to create a deterrent so that traffic through both tunnels is kept at the levels seen currently through just one tunnel. If the volume of traffic goes up, the toll will be increased. Critics point out that there seems little point spending £2.2 billion on a new road capacity which you then have to deter people from using. An increased fee is less likely to be a deterrent to HGV operators than to people in cars. So, whilst overall vehicle numbers may be reduced by increased toll charges, the shift will be towards a higher proportion of more polluting vehicles. Tolls to use the tunnels will also worsen inequality across London by penalising those who are least able to afford the expense. The argument that increased tolls will remove harmful effects also falls down because any toll at all could be removed by a future mayor in response to pressure from drivers. This has happened before, when Mayor Johnson removed the Western Congestion Charge extension in the run-up to re-election. 
Of course, there's another aspect to the proposed tunnel that affects everyone on the planet. Climate change. If we are to meet the terms of the Paris Agreement, car usage needs to dramatically reduce by 2030. The mayor himself highlighted targets to reduce car use and move towards carbon neutrality in his election manifesto. Claims that air pollution in London is improving may be true, but 98% of the city still remains above the recommended World Health Organization guidelines for dangerous particulates, which the mayor aims to meet by 2030. It makes no sense for the mayor to spend £2.2 billion on increasing road capacity. Climate, air quality, traffic and public health experts unanimously agree that the Silvertown Tunnel is a step in the wrong direction. TfL has never examined other less risky and much cheaper options to congestion near the Blackwall Tunnel. For example, to simply implement a toll there, or to introduce a wider road pricing scheme across the area. The income could be invested in free electric buses and new crossings for pedestrians, bikes and cargo bikes for which funding has so far failed to materialise. In November, the UK is to host a major UN climate change conference. Wales has already frozen all road building projects pending a review. London's mayor should set a similar example and pause and review the Silvertown Tunnel project. If you share our concerns about the Silvertown Tunnel, here are some things you could do.